Howdy, I'm Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted, and this is Hot Black. We would like to talk to you today about, hmm, how about making your entity's animation react to what you're doing. So, when we're flying and we rotate, we're flying, we're flying, and we go down, our dragon points down, and when we go up, our dragon points up, and we go to the right, our dragon rotates right, and we go to the left, he rotates left, so he, he feels like he's got some movement when he's he's doing stuff, and and you can apply it if if you're doing vehicles, and you you're on the ground, you can see how when we're running, he's going from side to side. That's hard because we don't have any flat surfaces, and he's fast. But see how when he we're walking, he his body's reacting it, it like you would expect it to. So there's some rotation there. That's not animation. That's well, it's animation, but it's it's math with within the animation. And so you can see also in using the the neck. So when I when I look to the right, his neck looks to the right, and when I look to the left, his neck looks to the left. So we're using queries when we look up and when we look down he he he'll do a little bit of that movement to try to to act like you you want him to just kind of like a horse would or like a, a dragon would so when we shoot we also are pointing and moving when the particles are going so we have the same thing now if we're sitting and we use the head see how the head's not solid now we're actually moving the head around and we can use that to shoot the fire in the direction that we want or the, f the flame or whatever the fireball and we're still just sitting so that's what we're talking about today how to get the things that you're animating to be more responsive to what you're doing and, and it, you won't believe how little effort and work it takes just to add in some of these type of things. So really quick, before we jump into it, I wanna show you one more place where this is an example. That's an, a good example of when you're writing something. So it's the same thing would apply if you're gonna have a motorcycle or a car or a horse. Uh, when you go up a block, you want you know your wheel to go up on that side, and you want to have some shock and some feel to that. Um, but you also want to apply this to things like birds and bees and moths and butterflies and flies and anything that has a lot of movement to it. It is really needs to have this type of logic added into it to make it animate how I think you kind of want things to animate. So let's go to here. We just have a, a, a blocked off room and we're going to uh, give ourselves a butterfly spawn egg. We're just going to... And then we're gonna spawn in just a whole bunch of butterflies. And then we'll give ourselves.
Okay. So right off the bat, look at the behaviors of the butterflies. Look at how when they they move their direction, they whole body swing and they feel very natural. Now you have the moths which are flying more flat and have a much different flight to them, almost like they're struggling. Okay. And then you have the hummingbirds, which fly more flat, but then they can take off and they can do more fancy things. Let's see if we give ourselves some flowers. If we can convince them to come see us. So see how the butterflies, the hummingbird looks right. He's kind of landing. His body's feeling good. The hummingbirds are coming. They're flying flat. And then when you move, they all do their thing and their bodies feel really fluid and smooth. They, their bodies can rotate in, in weird directions and you can get a, a good feel for how they're rotating around. So let's look at how that works out. So if we jump over into a uh, block bench, uh, we're gonna, we have just a dragon, that's fine. Let's open up our butterfly as well. You could also apply this to uh, the bees if you wanna make the bees smaller. So let's jump into this one and let's grab our animal butterfly. Okay, so traditionally you would animate the, the butterfly like this, right? And this is how it's animated. I'm not, there's nothing, there's nothing special. That's the actual animation, but here's the trick. In the animation, on the body, so the root bone, we add this one little bit of math here, this math clamp. And, and all we're doing is controlling when you go forward or when you go up or down or when you go back and forth or when you go left or right. In all of these queries, we're just feeding that into the animation in real time. So when the butterfly says, I'm going to fly up, and it goes to fly up, the animation is going to react to that, and it's going to give the feel of na natural movement that's what most of Minecraft animations are missing. And a lot of people think, well, I have to do math animations and do all of this cosine and all of this crazy, crazy stuff you see to get something that feels natural. But you can see this is all it is. Um, all the rest of these are just the wings. These are just the the actual like swinging of the animation all we're doing is this one box these are zeros so that it has kind of that feel where it goes from zero to doing its thing back to zero because it butterflies are kind of flaky um and so and then we're just timesing this query by three and you can change it. So if it's a big entity, you might want it to be smaller. If it's a little entity, you might want it to be bigger. And right away, just adding this one thing, it adds all of that beautifulness to the butterfly. That's all we're adding. So let's go look at Hot Black. That's off based on Hot Black Desi Auto from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So let's look at his fly animation. So here he is flying. We have his body. In this case, his body is the root. And we look at the math of the rotation. And here we go. On Z, so rotate left, rotate uh, right, we just add in the, the yaw speed. So 
what whatever you're doing when you rotate right that's how fast you're rotating i want you to just turn a little bit and then the math clamp is just saying but only this much uh, and that that that's where you can go in and you can tweak it so that you can say well i don't want you to tilt too much so when you're running i want i'm running i'm running and then i'm gonna turn some so i lean into the turn that's natural you even do it in your car watch your parents and watch watch yourself when you're driving you're driving and you lean into the turn so you're leaning into the turn and you need to put that into your animation. And all it takes is this one query here. This one query is all it takes. Now in this case, because he's such a big entity and we're flying and we're doing all the stuff, we're dividing that by six. So we want it to be smoother. So we're dividing it by six and we have a minus 25 one way and a 25 the other, and that's it. Now in here, we're also adding in the head rotation because I want to know um, I want the body to react to the player's body reaction so in this situation if the player looks down then the head rotation will go down the body rotation will go down if the player looks up and the player's movement, the mouse and the controller is based on the head. So if it goes down, if it goes up, and then it's 70, minus 70 degrees down and 45 degrees up. Typically, uh, zero is straight ahead center. So I'm going, and then in the, the animation, we can feed in the speed of the entity into this so that the faster you're going, the more those reactions happen. So the faster you're moving, I'm boosting, I'm flying really fast, then I take a turn, then I'm gonna get more rotation, but I'll still only to 25, but it might happen faster, so it feels like you, the speed's going, and then you slow down and, and you get less of that rotation. So this is where you're getting that in, and it doesn't matter if you're running, or you're walking, uh, you might add it in more. So I might have it here and then out. So in this case, I'm getting, uh, I'm adding a few frames to X, Y, so there's just a little bit of rocking, uh, but same thing. In some cases, you may divide it by four. You really just have to put it in the game and test it. You're not gonna see it in block bench because you're not actually doing those things. So that's the big thing here. That's what I want to show you is just this very simple math clamp. So you only go so far. You don't want it to freak out and go too far. Um, you could in some cases. It's really fun. Uh, if you want to have like a cat that fights, you can put this query in there without the math clamp and, and it will roll in a circle in cases or it might roll over, it might do flips, or it might do crazy things. It, it can add a lot of fun to it. So don't be shy about testing it out and seeing what you can do with it. You know, put it times 10 and see what happens. Put it minus 10, put it divide it. Test out these numbers and see how it goes. So that's all it is you easily just throw that in there if it's in a vehicle um, same thing you could put it in your tires for shocks so they move up when you uh, or move down when the vehicle moves up and move uh, up when the move the vehicle moves down so you can have that when the vehicle rotates up to go up something you can have the vehicle rotate uh, I have a video showing that on the channel if you want to see how that works but this is really how easy it is to add that stuff in. Another thing really quick is just adding in flips and adding in spins. Um, well, I'm not using any of that logic here, but that's something that you can do inside your tricks to give some randomness to your tricks so that your tricks don't always feel the same. You could add in some of these queries so that you could get more randomized effects. So as he jumps up and he does something, uh, you can add in some of those queries to react to it. So if you ask him to do a trick while he's chasing you, the trick will be different because the speed and the rotation and what he's doing, he'll do something really fun. He'll just do a crazy, crazy thing. Whereas if he's just sitting, he'll just do his normal trick. If he's falling, he does the trick. Or if he's jumping and does a trick, then it'll be completely different. So that's a fun way to add in some of those queries. Now you can go look at the, the Bedrock documentation 
and I look at all of the queries, and I really suggest you do read through the queries and figure out which of those have effects of what the player is doing and many of them you can feed right into your animation and make entirely new things that are reactive and responsive that you couldn't do before with just keyframes and as you saw we did no cosines we did no advanced math we didn't do any waves we simply put one query into the animation to make it responsive and feel like it's alive. How many helicopters have you seen in an add-on that go f perfectly straight? How many planes and they don't ro rotate right or rotate left or rotate down or rotate up and then you see people that they'll do all this crazy ACs and animations and this and that just to do something this simple of adding one query into a keyframe. So thank you for watching. I'm Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted. If you'd like to support me, check out my add-ons in the marketplace, Dragonfire and Dragonfire Nations. If you'd like more help or other guides, put your questions and requests in the comments or check out my website, Outlandishly.com. Com, oh, outlandishlycrafted.com, and you can always ask your questions on the Bedrock um, Dev Discord or Blockbench Discord. Those are the best places to get more help. Thanks for watching.